It's wildflower time in Central Texas. So what is that beautiful forest? That is Lake Somerville State Park, Nails Creek Unit. And where is it in relationship to Houston? About 100 miles northwest or so. That's not hill country yet though, right? No, it's not hill country. Yeah. Not technically. It's still in the forest. It's the Piney Woods of East Texas. Piney Woods, okay. Although there's less pines here in these Piney Woods. Yeah, that forest was really nice, kind of light. Oh, and what was special about that section? It was, what's it called? Equestrian. It was uh, for people who want to go there with their horses. There are uh, horse stalls or pens at every campsite where you can lock your horse up for the night. And you can ride the horse around the campsite, right? Yes, or your horse can sleep under a tree. <laughs> and we had a nice setup with the living room outside, the dining room, and a bedroom, obviously. Yes. Somebody was sleeping right upon arrival. The lake is kind of low. Very low. You can't launch boats there right now. Yeah, we didn't have rain. For On day time. two, the rangers got their airboat stuck and they couldn't get it back on the trailer for about 30 minutes. And they uh, were running the airboat at top power. Did you see that? Yeah, they finally uh, got it up on the, air, okay. on the trailer. But the main purpose of this visit was to see the wildflowers. It's early spring in Texas this year, right? And here's some beautiful wildflowers. Yeah. I don't know what these are. Well, we don't know the names, but we sure enjoyed looking at them. Getting close to the desert, as you can see. And there were a lot of birds that were singing. We could hear cardinals every morning. So we know these white flowers, these are Indian paintbrush. Yes, those are Indian paintbrush. The orange ones. And some unidentifiable pink flowers. Would you say they're mostly along the highways? They can be in a field, but have to be someplace where you don't mow. But it, they try not to mow them until they go to seed, right? Yeah, but places that want them to, to show up, they don't mow. Mm -hmm. Blue bonnets are the state flower of Texas. They're actually lupines. So tell about, do you know about Lady Bird Johnson's program? No, you'd have to talk to my mother about that. Why? She knows all about that. She remembers it. Ah, oh, okay. <laughs> all I know is she sponsored wildflower program to have wildflowers planted all over Texas. But to that's the extent of what I know about it. To beautify the highways, I think. Right? Yes. Yeah. And that area, it's mostly farms, so we saw a lot of animals. Seem to be mostly cattle ranching, mm. not really farms. Well, what's the difference? Well, a farm grows crops and a ranch grows animals. And you think that's hamburger on the hoof, right? Beef cattle, for sure. Mm. Well, they're not dairy farms. And they all had calves. Yes, it's spring. Calves are everywhere. They were very shy cattle. <laughs> right. They just stare at you. They don't really come close. <laughs> Here's a calf close to the fence. Yeah. He, he went and hid from me. Yes, I see that. <laughs> also horses and donkeys yes. and um, goats. A few goats. Yeah. Lots of animals. Old tractor. Yeah, some of those farms are really pretty.
As usual, we drove around and... Ponchiki! Well, that was not the main objective of our girls at uh, Giddings. Uh, but, but it is Ponchiki! <laughs> <laughs> they were good, too. They were good donuts. Tasty donuts. When we go camping, it's fun to visit all those small towns and just patronize local cafes and bakeries and try local foods. Yes. Cinnamon twist for Amelia. Yeah, she likes that cinnamon. And uh, a gallon of hot chocolate. <laughs> right, yeah, it was big. Dime Box, Texas. Why is it called Dime Box? Because there's a dime in the box. <laughs> That's not why it's called that. But. Yeah, I was going to give everybody links to read about the history of this town. And you can do that. But just briefly, in the old days, it has cost a dime to send the mail to the nearby town, Giddings, actually, where it was collected. Put your letter in the box and you paid a dime, so I'm going to the dime box, turned into Dime Box, Texas. This is Brenham, Texas, home of Bluebell ice cream. There is a factory nearby that you can visit and taste all different flavors of ice cream, which of course, everybody who has kids, they really have a good time there. But Brenham itself is a historic town that's been basically, the whole downtown was restored and it looks really nice and tons of restaurants and shops and galleries and just a nice place to spend some time in. And we were there right before Easter, so all the shops are decorated for Easter. Do you like blueberry ice cream? It's okay. It's not as good as Tillamook. I mean, it's creamy, but it's kind of on the light side. So we prefer even creamier ice creams. <laughs> it's not plum beer. Right. Crackles were so loud. Yeah, walking around there is nice, and then we go eat at the Longhorn Cafe. It has a lot of character and a lot of good Texas food. This is the uh, firefighter museum that we couldn't go into because it's only open on Saturdays. But they do have that historic fire engine displayed outside. Yes. Which is cool. We did go into the Heritage Museum in Brenham, which was kind of interesting. Except for the spelling errors. Yeah, a lot of information. All those plaques were spelled. It kind of talks about the history of the region, what they do there. Local residents, army uniform from World War II. They said this was a 40 millimeter shell, but I think that's a lot more than 40 millimeter. 40 millimeter? That's what the plaque says. <laughs> like 240 millimeters. <laughs> yeah, that will be a little bit bigger than that. <laughs> the museum was in an old post office building and they installed some old mailboxes and in every mailbox there was some, not in every one, but in a lot of them there was something that you could look at. So you open and you see a surprise. But these post office boxes were from the old post office. And the people did all these little dioramas inside of them. Mm -hmm. How do you say diorama in Russian? Diorama. Diorama. <laughs> 
Yeah, I thought it was really neat. I could yeah, have spent cool. a lot more time there. We didn't have anything else, but you could have. Random buggy. Stagecoach. Is that supposed to be a stagecoach? That's what it said. Oh. Where to put the mail sacks? Well, yeah, maybe, maybe they just talk about how mail was delivered in the old days. They grew cotton in that area. Little dental chair, but I remember dental chairs like this from when I was a kid, so it's not that old. It looks awful. <laughs> but yeah, and this is the basement of the museum. It's not actually the museum, and the museum had to be remodeled because it flooded during Harvey, and it took them six years to reopen it. Yeah, they walked on it a long time. It's a giant xylophone that guy's playing. Yeah, old toys, old cash register. Yeah. Everything looked much better in terms of. Product design. Styling, yes. This is when we're leaving. There were spider webs everywhere that morning. And the spiders basically built them overnight. It was just amazing the speed. It was very cool. And foggy. Why do we have to hold up the camper? Well, one, there's a legal limit to the width of the camper on the road of 96 inches, so it has to be 96 inches or less. And two, it makes the camper more stable. It would fall over. Yeah, so. It can't go down the road if it's too wide, right? That's correct. Yeah. It's a wide load and you have to be escorted yeah. with a pilot car and all that stuff. That's the uh, breakaway cable for the brakes. If the trailer disconnects from the truck, that cable pulls on the electrical switch and it kills the electricity to the brakes and they slam on to stop the trailer from rolling down the road. And that's the electrical for the lights on the trailer. Which we test before we depart. Yes. And this is me disconnecting the electrical to the trailer before we go. So in the next video, we will talk about the second part of this trip, which was... Fabulous Port Aransas, Texas. Gulf of Mexico. On the Gulf of Mexico. Where we got blown by the wind. That cable is awfully thick. It is very heavy. But that's what you have to have to have. 50 amps, yeah. 50 Going amps. that kind of distance to prevent voltage drop. Because it's 50 amps, single phase, 120 volts. Some people might be interested in technical details. Possibly. Right, here we go. We're leaving. Bye, Ksenia. <laughs> behind with the camera in my hands. Make wide turns not to slam the camper into the trees or anything else. Not to run it off the road. Very heavy. 15,000 pounds. And here I am dumping the sewer tanks. And there's random Texas in the fall. Tumanyozik. <laughs>